So, the plan is to maybe do the advent of code in Haskell, since we're learning Haskell, right? Let's check this out. Day one, Sonar Sweep. You're uh, minding your own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off. Zoom in a little bit. You rush to see if you can help. Apparently, one of the elves tripped and, ac tripped and accidentally set the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. No. Oh. Before you know it, you're inside a submarine the elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights because of course it is. And it even has, has a, an experimental antenna that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna's signal strength displaying 0 to 50 stars. Your first instinct tells you that in order to save Christmas, you'll need all 50 stars by uh, December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day. So two puzzles each day, the advent calendar, right? Because we need 50 stars. Oh, wow. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. Right. As the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby floor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report, your puzzle input, appears. Okay. Each line is a measurement of the sea floor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Okay, we'll look in front, I guess. Right, for example, suppose you had the following report. This is the closest to our submarine and this is the furthest away, so it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. This report indicates that scanning outwards from the submarine, the sonar sweep found depths of 199, 200, 28, 210, and so on. The first order of business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases, just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried into deeper water by an ocean current or fish or something. To do this, count the number of times a depth me measurement increases from the previous measurement. There is no measurement for the first measurement. All right. In the previous, in the example above, the changes are as follows. Count the number of times a depth increases. All right, increase, 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 decrease. All right. In this example, there are seven measurements that are larger than the previous measurement. How many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? To play, please identify yourself via one of these services. Oh shit, I haven't done this before. All right, so let's identify ourselves via GitHub, I guess. Right, I need to... GitHub. Where am I at? My username is... I could dread and my password is let me just read out my password out loud yeah. sent they sent an email I need to get I guess right I haven't checked my email in a long while haven't have I yeah, updated the 31st of October. Oof. All right, let's update today. That's the wrong, the wrong email address. Here we go. Please verify. 
Verification code. Right, there we go. Authorize tow pass. Sure. What would you like to be called? Mike Dread, sure. Sponsor, wait, link to my GitHub? No, let's not do that. Sponsor code? Live blank unless you're employee or similar of a sponsor. I don't have anything like that. All right, let's save. Here we go. Get your puzzle input. And then we... Right. Do we only need to... Oh, I thought we were gonna do proper maths here, but we're just checking if they're bigger or lower. Nice. All right. Get puzzle input. Right. So we take... Uh, what just happened? This is, uh, that was strange. Yet I don't know how to, wait, if we do, there we go, that's what I wanted. We take all that and we create a CD. Right, so what do we name this problem? What's it called? Sonar Sweep. Vim Sonar Sweep. No, actually. Day one. Dot HS. And we in here and we Probably a good thing to have a uh, text file, right? Some some file, just some file, all right. Um, data dot text. Here we go. Two thousand of them, right? I. I have no idea how to do imports in Haskell. Oof. Uh, or import a text file, I guess. Hmm. Wake up early to solve day four problem first in the world? No, that won't happen. I'm not even sure that we're gonna catch up today for uh, right now. Well, like until tomorrow, we might catch up, might not, right? I'm a beginner at Haskell. I don't even know how to get the data in to analyze it, right? No, there is data, but actually, can I, maybe I can just, oh, look at that. We can probably just take it from the URL. There is that HTTP uh, thing, right? Where we can get the code from from the actual URL. Hmm. Don't need to know how to manipulate manipulate files, but you do know how to manipulate lists. Oh, you mean I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy paste the list into here? Just copy paste the list. Wait, does this work? Can I just go to the bottom and just say, like, list, since it's a lazy language, does it matter? And then I can just do that and paste it in here. I suppose that's one way of doing it instead of, right, don't make it harder than it has to be. And then we go. Oops. Uh, how do we do this again? Uh, 
We do that this with with a macro, right? A macro is probably the easiest way to do this. That Q. All right, no, no, no. You do QM. There we go. And then we add that one. And then we delete. And then we escape. Oh, no, we do a space. And then we escape. And then we quit recording, and then we press M. No, oh, shit. How do we... Mm, fuck, I don't remember. Macros in Vim? It was a long time ago. How do we use the macro? I haven't done this in a while. Macro in Vim. It's called a macro, right? Example. Here we go. Mm. Recording a macro. QD to register. There we go. Complex series of commands. Stop recording. And then at D. There we go. We just do... Did I do this correctly? At... Did I say M? Yeah. yeah. At M. Alright, it's working. So what we do... Is that we mm, at M how many times? I don't remember. A little less than 2,000? Actually, let's just do it 2,000 times. So, 2,000 at M. Right, I know there's a better way to do this so it doesn't take this long. Right, and now, since we just saw that, oops, I did it one too many times, and there we go. My list is fixed. Let me just keep that at the very bottom, or do we need to keep it at the top? I don't remember. It's a lazy language. We probably need to keep it at the top. Maybe not. Actually, name. It. let's not name it list. Let's name it... Uh... Depth. Can we do that? Yeah, depth. Right, I think we've done something similar to this before, right? So what we do is that we create a function here that we call greater than... Wait. Greater than next. GT GTN. That's our function. Right, and if we get an empty list. Oh, no. GTN empty list. We just return what? Do we return an empty list? Right, because we do the what we did yesterday, right? The length of the list. We just go by the length of the list. Yeah, so we return an empty list. Actually, let's do this. Which will take... We'll take X. We will take Y. And we will take... Well, it doesn't matter, right? No, X. No, XS. We need to have that. No. Zero. Because we take if y. Oh, this need, needs to be a guard. Yeah, it needs to be a guard because if y is greater than x, then we return plus one, right? No, we return one. We do the plus later on. Hmm. 
This also becomes a little bit easier with, with a bit of math. Hopefully it won't be too difficult without the math, because I'm just I'm just not gonna do the math. Yeah. I'm not gonna do the math. I'm gonna do right, this is a coding challenge. I'm gonna do it with code, not with math. Right? That's what we were trying to do, right? We were every time it increased, that is what we did. That is what we did, yeah. No, actually, don't don't do it that way. Something like this. I'll spoil the math after you have done it. Sure. Right. If that's true. We return plus one, right? That's what we want to return. Uh, otherwise. We return plus zero. Wait, shit, how does this work? Because we need to do we need to do like a recursive call. You need a parenthesis? Uh yes, I do. Right, because we need to make we need to make this recursive call, right? Because we need to make like in both of these situations we need to call GTN on uh, uh, Y XS, right? So we with just a no this is how we do one plus this no parentheses and this just returns zero plus gtn y access right so what should be happening here is that we get a list we take if y is greater than x we take one plus and then we'd make a recursive call right so it's first time it's going to be zero plus isn't that just how we do it it's a non-exhaustive pattern that it is wait is it Oh, because this this ends up in a recursion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, no. If an empty list, we just return zero. Oh, singleton. Good point. Do I have to? Does that count as two different? How do I define a singleton? We've talked about this before. How do I know to put like a singleton? Is that is this a singleton? That is a singleton. Nice. All right. But of course, we don't use a, we use x because that's what we used before. And both of those return zero, right? Because there is nothing else to compare with. Right, and now it's time to test it out, right? So GHCI and we load, what's the name? Day one dot HS. Oh. Oh, it loads. So then we just take GTN on depth. No?
Variable not in scope. ETN. Is this because of the... How does it say that GTN is not in scope? Is this not... Yeah, yeah, I remember that this is just syntactic sugar. We're still using X into an empty list behind the scenes. I remember that, right? I was... I was considering when we first learned about that, right, to never use this syntax. So that is something I definitely remember. And just using this, uh, this colon for making all the lists instead, but. Wait, I don't understand. How can GTN not be in scope? Right, what if we do GTN... One, two, three, just check that out. No. We did load day one, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, we loaded day one and it compiled main. It got interpreted, okay, and it got loaded. Do I have to somehow... Man, I haven't sat in EHCI for a while now. Do you know what's going on? All right, let's try type of GTN. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Did I did I not write this? Did I not save it? Is that what's going on? Oh. I didn't save the t the file. <laughs> it's like, why isn't it there? All right, so now we try again. 1529. If I did it correctly, 1529 is our answer. Let's try that. Fifteen twenty-nine. That's the right answer. Nice, we got a gold star. Oh man, that feels great. Feels great getting a gold star. Right, you are one gold star closer to finding the slay keys. Continue to part two. Let's do it. That was... W oh, right. First, Colgate on tab wanted to spoil the math solution. Right. Right, math was A greater than B if and only if A minus B is greater than zero. Let's see, he did, to spoil the math, I'm just going to copy and paste that and show it. Right. So this would have been the math sol solution, that's what you're saying? Is that the math solution? I feel like, do we have and only in Haskell? Return A. Is that what we're doing? We return A. A is greater than B if and only if A minus B is greater than zero. Now, this is not the solution. This is just a rule. This is why the math makes it easier. This does not make this easier to me. Like, at all. This doesn't help me at all. This is just confusing me. Hmm. Right, call get on tab so you could use zip width minus zero depth depth and count positives. Yeah, I was thinking about doing something like that and just counting the positives. Oh right, but we can zip width, right? With the list, yeah, yeah, we can zip width minus uh, 
and zero. Yeah, the math doesn't work for me, but that would be a great solution, right? Doing a zip width and doing the... Because zip width, that is in between every single one, right? And you're saying we could do like a weird function stuff with that? Hmm. Right. But our first one is done. So, yeah. Definitely the math solution. Definitely just broke me, yeah. That would not have helped me at all. That would have made the task way harder. Way harder. That's why... Uh, zero into depth and depth. Yep, I'm just getting confused. I don't understand what's going on at all, Colgatine on tap. Yep, I suck at maths. So I'm just not gonna do the maths. There we go. Considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you'd expect it. There's just too much noise in the data. Zip width takes a function and two lists. Oh, right, right, right. That's why you, you would need to have the, the zero thing there. Right, instead consider the sum of a three measurement sliding window. Again, considering the above example. Consider the sums of a three measurement sliding window. Again, considering the same. Wait, are we comparing this to this? A to C? Start by comparing the first and the second three measurement win window. The measurements in the first window are marked A, 199, 200, and 208. Oh, and the next window is... Are we comparing 200, 208, and 210? Their sum is 607. The second window is marked B. 200, 208, and 210. All right, so first these three, then these three, then these, these three, and so on and so forth, right? That's what they're meaning. Right, its sum is 618. The sum of measurements in the second window is larger than the sum of the first. So, this first comparison increased. Your goal now is to count the number of times the sum of measurements in the sliding window increases from the previous sum. So compare A with B and then compare B with C and then C with D and so on. Stop when there aren't any enough measurements left to create a new three measurement sum. sum. In the above example, the sum of each three measurement window is as follows. Right, no previous sum. In this example, there are five sums that are larger than the previous sum. Sure. All right, consider sums of a three measurement sliding window. How many sums are larger than the previous sum? Although it hasn't changed, you can still get your puzzle input, right? We still have our puzzle in input, it's the same. Hello, Node Runner. We are doing Advent of Code. Yep. Oh, no. How are you doing today? Nice to see you again. Right, so. The first thing was that we increase, check the increase of all of them, so. We can just, right, we can do the same. Do we have to save this for posterity? No, we can just make changes to it. Oh. I, have a, I have a lap cat right now. Oh, that's such a good and bad feeling. Why is that? Right, and the same... We do the same thing, we just take another 
to make it an exhaustive patterns. So we take x, y, and we return zero. Right, to make it exhaust an exhaustive pattern. And we say that in here, It, wait, 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 no, 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 let's undo that for now. We actually want to use this function, this, this very same function, we want to just create a new list, right? We just want to call this list on, yeah, yeah we want to create a new list and then just call this list, uh, this function on the new list. So, um, what was it called again? Uh, Re-measurement sliding window. Um, oh shit. Shit, shit, shit. Right, insert. Three measurement sliding window. That's the name of our function, nice. I'll spoil the math again after you're done. I mean, feel free to. I'm like, the math, not gonna help me, right? It just confuses me. So I'm, I'm not even gonna try because that's just gonna mess with my head. But feel free to start spoil the math, indeed. All right. What we do is that we just take. Right. We take again. We're. We just take the three values, right? We take the X, we take the Y, we take the Z, and we re right, and the rest of the list, of course. Then we just return the um, uh, X plus Y plus Z. Now we put this in a list, right? We put that in a list that we will then join with... Right, we're gonna call this TMSW on Y, Z, X, S, right? Because it's going to return. Yeah, we have to do it this way because. And we. This won't work, right? Because that will put it in the wrong order, I think. Hmm. That looks like you're doing maths before I am done, Colgate on tap, yeah. A plus B plus C is greater than B plus C plus D. If an, yeah, yeah, that looks like math again. I'm not even gonna look, that, look at that because I'm not done. I don't want to do the maths. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I said it was fine. I just, I don't want to look at it before I'm done because it, the math is just gonna confuse me. Right, we can't do it that way because it's gonna flip the list, right? Because we're gonna prepend. Yeah, this is prepending. So we would need to flip the list. It's better to just use the plus plus. And join the lists together. I, I think this is less efficient, uh, less efficient way of doing it, but it's easier. So let's do it the easy way, I guess. Right, and right, and now we need to take our edge cases where we take 
exactly. TMSW on an empty list returns an empty list. Just like if we have X, we return an empty list. And if we have X, Y, we return an empty list. That's an exhaustive pattern, right? Maybe. It is, yes. Right, so what we do is that when we save this thing, we load... Uh, no, we reload. And it works. Right, so now we do call GTN on TMSW depth. Fifteen sixty seven. Maybe. Maybe it works. Let's try it out. Fifteen sixty seven. That is the right answer. Another gold star. Oh man. These gold stars is really such a good idea in a game. Makes me feel great. Yeah. You're one gold star closer to finding the Slay Keys. You have completed day one. You can share on Twitter, Mastodon, this victory, or return to the calendar. Return to the calendar. Note owner says that cat time is over, but coffee time has only just begun. I mean, that cats, they come and go. But coffee, always arrive, I guess. I don't know. All right, so spoiling the math was... All right, let's check the, spo the spoiling of the math now when I'm done. The spoil of the math that would make it easier if you understand math is that A plus B plus C is greater than B plus C if and only if... All right, yeah, it's the same thing as the previous one. It just, for me, it just confuses me. Might help someone else? I don't know. All right, so that's day one. Really, let's... Uh... So we do, since we're catching up, we do day two. Return to the advent calendar. Yep, we've got time. I've got two stars, nice. Day two, dive. Doing comments like a proper programmer? <laughs> I mean, I wanted to leave it in there, just for posterity, yeah. Now you need to figure out how to do, how to pilot this thing. Ooh, that's a, that's important, isn't it? It seems like the submarine can take a series of commands like forward one, down two, or up three. Yes. Yep, note owner says Splitgate had a Christmas update. It's called Splitmas, of course. Of course it's called Splitmas. Is it any good? Is it fun? Is your Wayland setup working? Do you still have artifacts? Actually, no. Didn't didn't you say that Splitgate worked pretty fine? It's good. Forward X increases the horizontal horizontal position by X units. Down X increases the depth by X units. Up two decreases the depth. By X units. Oh, that is confusing. I'm using Wayland despite the artifacts. But the artifacts is not that bad, I hope. Right. Up, decrease. Down, increase. That's usually how it works, right? That's not gonna... I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be doing this wrong at all. Yeah, I'm not gonna mix these up a 
tiny bit. They're pretty bad, says Node Runner. Depends on the program, the artifacts. Too bad. Right, note that since you're on a submarine, down and up affects your depth. And so they have the opposite result of what you might expect. Yep. Right, the submarine seems to already have plan have a planned course. Your puzzle input. You should probably figure out where it's going. For example. Oh, not one says there's people working on it. That is good to hear, right? Oops, sorry about that. It's good to hear that people are working on it. Right, for example, forward five, down five, forward eight, up three, down eight, forward two. Your horizontal position and depth both start at zero. The steps above would then modify them as follows. And, oh, we start at zero, position and depth. But so we just return a, a tuple of where we are. Hmm. X and Y. No one says, I mean, people in the community. Wait. I mean, people in the community? Nobody knows if NVIDIA is doing anything because of course we don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course we don't. NVIDIA is doing something? I don't think so. Yeah. My thinking is that NVIDIA is probably thinking that thinking that they have now done their part, so they're over and done with it, maybe? Who knows? After following these instructions, you would have a horizontal position of 15 and a depth of 10. Multiplying those together produces 150. Oh! Why do we multiply them together? Calculate the horizontal position and depth you would have after following the planned course. What uh, what do you get? Oh, right. It's just because he just wants a single answer. He doesn't want a tuple. He just wants an, wants an integer as an answer. So therefore we multiply them. Which is fine. Yeah, that's completely fine. I don't hear the music very low. Increase the volume a little bit. That's probably fine. And then we multiply them. We get 42 if we have 6 and 9. Right, and then we get our puzzle input. Boom. Oh, this is what we saw before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third, control I. And just copy that stuff over here. And now we're at day two. Where we're gonna call this it. Those needs to be strings, tuples. Hmm. Probably easiest, right? It's a key value pair. First of all, we just put it all in here, and we've got a thousand of them, don't we? Right. Is this where we use Frank? No, this is not where we use Frank. This is not where we use Frank. Instead, we... Mm, not owner says coffee's a brewing. Oh, I thought... Oh, coffee time is... To prepare the coffee. It's not to start drinking the coffee. I thought coffee time was when you had prepared and started drinking. I actually slept good for once. It was nice. That's very nice to hear. Yeah, very nice to hear. Has the sleeping been an issue since the new the new stuff? I know you said that uh, you don't sleep as much, but has the not sleeping bit been a problem? I 
Like, have you been exhausted or something like that? Let's do another macro here and fix this. Fix this data structure into something else. Not sleeping is a problem. Yeah, I was just thinking, right? You can sleep more or less. I sleep more nowadays, but I hear when, as you grow older, you start sleeping less. Uh, above a certain age, people start, the need for sleep is reduced. That makes sense. Good question. Colgate Inotap asks Nodrunner if an electric kick scooter a thing in English. Uh, sure. Probably not, right? Could you describe what it looked like, Nodrunner? Right? Would you know what that was? I mean, all the words are English, but if you combine them, is that one thing? I used to own one. Oh, right. We were we were talking about it before that you can rent those, you can borrow those from Finnish libraries, maybe. Both me and Colgate Inotab didn't know the English word for it. All right, we make a list. Actually, yeah, yeah. make a list. Good list. Later. No, here we go. And we call it Wait, can we call it deer? That sounds like that's probably already taken in the namespace. Dire? Yeah, that's direct short for directions, yeah. Oh, and that's a picture of the, the thing. I don't know if there's a better name for it than that. Exactly, that's the one. For those who's curious, leave that open. This is what we're talking about. Right. I'm thinking that tuples is probably the way to do it. Should I put everything on one line again? Is that necessary? I don't know. I did play the Vim game, so I should be remembering this. Right, what we do is that we Take, all right, first we take Q, M, right. We, all right, start that, boom. Then we escape, we go to the end of the word, we add that and that. Shit. No, actually, let's let's redo this. I need the parentheses. I forgot the parentheses. Stop recording. Boom. All right. So, restart the recording. QM. Right. First, we insert that and that, and we go to the end to the word. We insert that and that, and then. How do we go to the end of the list? Like that and that. Boom. And last but not least, we go down and here. That's the full recording. Boom. Then try it out at M, does it work? Oh shit, no. That, at, M. Oh shit. We just do the list like this. Can we separate them by 
new lines. That's probably fine. Cold Gatuno taps this. Maybe it would be better for learning Haskell if you just made it string with those and use Haskell instead of Vim for parsing. Wait, you mean I should parse it with Haskell? But... Oh, so that would be... Would be a better way to do it. Instead of doing... Instead of doing... This... Just do it with Haskell. I mean, we're got, it seems like we're getting, um, right, we're getting uh, data samples every, every day, right? Oh shit, and I screwed it up anyway, didn't I? Yep, I screwed it up anyway. Right, can we just undo that whole thing? And we just... Sure. Right, since I screwed it up anyway, we might as well. Right, can't you make a multi-line string in Haskell like this? Doesn't look like a multi-line string in Vim, that's for sure. Double check. No, it looks fine. For some reason, Vim... Oh, yeah, Vim just loses track of it. That's what's going on. Wait, missed... Apostrophe S. Oh, strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read it. Oh, instead. There we go. Right, so we parse it with Haskell. So, um... Shit, we haven't done parsing at all, had we? have we? That's gonna, that's gonna slow the progress down quite the bit. Because that I have no idea how to do. I don't remember. Have we done this at all? I mean, it's just a list of... I guess we could just... Mm. No, we have done this a little bit. Right? Because we can... We have, right? We have characters and we have numbers we can just join the characters together and them together i guess yep that's the one seems a little bit tiny maybe the picture is just small i don't know that is an electric scooter, eh? Hmm. This is the only picture I could find. I rode electric scooters before they were cool. Oh, such hipster stuff. Love to hear it. Do we go backward or do we only go forward? I think we only go forward, right? We don't go backward. Yeah, yeah, we only go three directions. That's easy enough. Weird thing about this scooter is that the handlebar held the battery. That is a little bit weird, yeah. Wouldn't you want to put that on the 
plate, the board, under the board, just to make it heavier and more balanced, easier to drive, would have been my guess. I mean, we can just do words, right? If we do words... Mm, can we just load day two? Lexical error in string. Character literal at backslash n. Right, so you can't make a string like that. How do we make a multi-line string in Haskell then? Check it out. Multi-line string. Wait, what just happened? Haskell. Oh. But we can't do this. Right, I have to do it with Vim anyways. Not the best scooter in the world, yeah. Also, it would fall off sometimes if you hit a bump. Oof. <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> Not the best scooter in the world, indeed. Well, get in on tabs, this new line is done as backslash n in Haskell. Yeah. I guess that much parsing... Uh, you, I guess that much parsing you would have to do with Vim, because you don't know how to read files yet. I mean, it has to just be open or something, right? Open the text file. Yeah, right? That's what, what I was saying the last time, right? Either we have to open it as a file or because this, this won't work. We can't... Yeah, yeah. If we're not doing it in Vim, then we're not doing it in Vim, right? Hmm. Note owner says I destroyed the scooter by the time I was done with it. Right. Yeah, what's stopping someone from renting a scooter and just taking it off off jumps or going off road? Yeah, that sounds wait. You destroyed the scooter by the time like intentionally or when you were done it was just completely wrecked. Yeah, it's not like part of the scooter th both <laughs> right nice I mean let's let's check here instead we do how to open file in Haskell there we go input and output oh shit reading and writing to a file open file I'm trying to read the contents of a file, turn the text to uppercase, and then write it back. Here's the code I have written. Main do. Not only says I was a kid, so I didn't take care of things, and the scooter was designed poorly. I mean, a scooter is not really... It's mostly for kids, right? It's mostly for kids. So, yeah, if it it should be able to take a beating. Otherwise, I would agree. Data.character, that's all we need to import. Well, get in on tabs is probably too advanced for learning this before Hello World, you think? Right. Create a handle. We open the file uh, in read wait well this is mistaken anyway right all right the io thing actually i checked into the opening files before when i was doing something else off stream but i have done this before i have contents to read file and yeah, there we go the only thing is that that i didn't get is that yeah yeah the the stuff we have in our file is not functional right the text have side effects. We don't know what it is, so it's 
you have to do just some specific work around, right? You have to do it in a within a do thing because you can't just define what it is because a file can be anything. So you have to do it uh, like imperative programming, I guess. How can I merge multiple lines into one in Vim? Oh, I, I mean, I can do that already. I, I was thinking of just adding the the backslash which, between each of them. Just kind of feels like, right, if we're doing it with Vim, then we might as well do it, do it all with Vim, right? I can just do a macro. Right. This. Do I just do percent J? That doesn't that doesn't seem like it works. It. Sorry. Now to is that VCV rack is super cool. I've been playing with it again. I don't remember. What is VCV rack? That join, range, and then lines. This won't give us spaces, will it? Yeah, this will just... We do that. Uh, oh shit, we're in the wrong. I have to go over here. Yay. Oh, it does actually join them by spaces. Right, and now we could do the rest, I guess. Oh shit, it's still working, isn't it? Just locked up. Wait. There we go. Oh, it actually added the space in front as well. And we check the end. Do Does it look good? Yep. And now we can parse it. Day two. There we go. And we can... Take then out of mm, I can probably do this right and then just words dire. Now look at that. Look at that. Easy parsing when you only have to do spaces, right? We could turn it into a tuple, but it's just a lot of work, isn't it? What we do is that we just... Right, every second one, we take the number. Yeah, yeah, we make... No, no, we make pattern matching against forward, down, and up. That's what we do. Right. Oh, not only says VCV rack allows you to create modular synthesizer in software. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I think you showed me this before. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Virtual synthesizers. Pretty cool indeed. Computers are that. Cool. You can do a lot of stuff. Alright. What we do is that we take POS. That's short for position. 
and we take pause where we care about care about there we get forward uh, oh shit Yeah, we, we should do two functions. Yeah, two different functions, probably. One for up and down and, well, yeah. And one for forward. All right, pause forward. And then X, X, S. Take Y, right? We have that thing. So when we get forward, boom. And then we take from int, no, from string. Shit, how do, how do we return? How do we make the nine into an integer? Isn't that from string, maybe? From string y. Which we then plus pause. All right, so um, shit, I, I remember this. Is this vertical, horizontal? Shit, I forget which is which. All right. Oh shit. Third vertical. Can we just get an image? Vertical is up and down. Horizontal is left and right. Yeah, it's along the horizon. I, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. So um, this is vert. Actually, we no. Let's name it vert. It's fine. XS. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to take the Y because Y is a number. Does that work? Oh, shit, we need to... Did I parse this? No, we can do that later, right? Remember to make it into words. Otherwise we have to... No, we can do that later, that's fine. Right, so... Vert, if we get an empty list, we return zero. And how do we make this exhaustive here? Do I have to care about the single? Yeah, 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 right? What if we get this one will pattern match here, right? Forward nine and then the rest of the list. Boom, and then we're calling it again. Then it'll pattern match down. So actually we put this below, don't we? Where um, when we don't we don't care about the string. Into excess. Actually, we don't, right, we don't do anything. We don't care about anything down here. 
do we? We don't have to we just do a pattern match for here. Right for every other iteration. Everything that does not pattern match this, we just return zero, right? We don't even need this one. This creates an exhaustive list, doesn't it? Because everything else returns zero, which is no, because right, it stops. Yeah, we're not doing a recursive call here. That's the problem. We need to do a re recursive call. We want to put the recursion at the very bottom, right? I assume. We meet, need to be more proper, I guess. Hmm. Right. So let's go get back to the empty list. We return zero. And I guess a singleton. And we don't care about what it is. We return zero. Is, is that exhaustive? All right, because... We will never match this. Why do you use from string? Because I need a number. I don't remember. It's just there right now. Haskell int from string. Type conversion. How do we do that? Oh, read. Oh, right. We just read into an integer. Or just an int. Oh, that's fine. So we do... Read that from... Integer. Probably a good idea to put a parentheses here. Oh man, me in parentheses, eh? That better? Actually, let's try if we can, if this, this works. Oh, it seems to be working. Right, and we have this here, and we do vert on that output, right? And see what just happens. No? Non-exhaustive pattern, that's what I thought. Right, so what we do then is that we vert and then we take. No, it has to be below. Right, maybe. Hmm. Hello, Macaroon Granola. Nice to nice to meet you. How are you doing today? Hey, tech question. Is Twitch getting rid of the sub token system or something? I have no idea. Is it just me or is anyone else uh, able to get a sub token purchase price list to load? I have not checked. I don't. I tried getting the price list to load even on big streams and it won't load the price list. Sorry, I, c I can't help you with that. Like at all. But. Hmm. Not on says it works for me. What's your web browser? It might be a problem with a web browser. If it doesn't load, 
I know that I have had, when running uh, Firefox in Twitch, there has been a lot of stuff that just doesn't load. Made me sad. Right, but I cannot do this. I was thinking of just doing... How do I pattern match this? Do I have to just do that? Then I just have to do down and into whatever, where we return zero and this is really how I have to do it. This seems like a lot of work. Hmm. Macaroons is a granola. Thanks anyway. I'm sorry I couldn't help. You can use, but won't that just pattern match too forward? And I was thinking if I just do this, this will pattern match to everything. So everything will be a zero, won't it? We will never reach forward here. I wanted a pattern match that matches down and up. Do it after forward there. But, but I was thinking of doing that, but that, I think that breaks as well, doesn't it? Right, I was thinking of just doing that, right? Actually, let's comment that out. Let's try this out, because I I was thinking that this breaks. Bert has different numbers of arguments. Oh. Yeah, it breaks. So what I have to do is... Like this. Is this really a good way to do it? Vert A, vert, and drop to. Oh. Right, I don't have to bring the entire list. I just take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just drop two. That's actually, that's a good tip, call it in on tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just call vert and we drop two from A. Exactly. So we just drop these two and then we go again. Oh, I like that one. That's a very good tip. Right. And we load and boom. There we go. Right. There it works. You see the game I posted in Discord for learning Vim? Oh yeah, yeah, I played through it, the Vim adventure. Or I played the first three levels, then they wanted 25 US dollars. And I, like I said, I might buy that in the future. Yeah, I might buy the game in the future just to play and learn Vim. No, it, was, it was better than I thought it would be, so... Spent like, I don't know. I love the idea. Too bad it's behind a paywall. Yeah, I mean, it's too bad, but... Still, it's a, it's a great game. I understand. They've spent... They did... I think they've spent... Well, I think $25 is 
as a gamer, I'm thinking that that game is too um, too expensive. Thinking like a gamer here, but it's such a niche game, right? So if they want to make any money, they won't sell a lot, right? Most people don't want to learn Vim. Most gamers don't want to learn Vim. So there's such a small number of people that will actually buy it. So the expense makes sense, I guess. Two hundred five US dollars, fair in my opinion. Yeah, exactly, right. I think it's fair. It's just I know other games that I've spent less than that for, right? How much does Factorio cost? There is a difference, right? The de all the development that it has been spent making Factorio into the amazing game it is. Victorio is 30 US dollar. Oh, I bought it before the price. I bought it for 20, yeah. Or, well, 20 euros, I guess. Not the same, but... If you just make that comparison, 25 dollars is a very high price, but it's not... It's not really comparable. Never goes on sale? No, but it started out with 20, and then they ri raised the price. Yeah, I bought it before they raised the price. It never goes on sale, but they... No one says, yeah, I understand. I, I think 20 US dollar was way too cheap for Factorio, yeah. Part of me thinks that 30 is too cheap for Factorio. No one says it makes sense that in early access it would be cheaper. Yep. I mean, they were upfront with that, right? They were very upfront that, yeah, during early access, we will raise the price in the future. I don't know if this Minecraft was like that for me. Expensive? No, sorry. It, it was too cheap. They don't have that problem with Minecraft anymore, do they? I don't think so. It was cheap in alpha. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Right. Ori. Just do the same thing. Ori. Uh, X. I can probably remove this. Don't need that anymore. Sorry. Down. I access. Equal to. And we do the same thing. Read. Y, and that's an integer. Down is plus, right? Yeah, plus or exit. Let's do that, and we change to up. That will be minus. And we just copy this one. Put it down here. There we go. We'll get. Uh, wait. No, don't says, dude. I love Minecraft. I need to play it more. Some more. Nice. Love to hear that. Good times. Me, not the super big fan. I think it's cool, but it's. Doesn't scratch my all my itches the same factory the same way Factorio does. Well, get in on tab says I bought the Steam version of Hyper Rogue when it was cheaper. Hyper Rogue is free, or I only played the free versions. I wasn't super into it, but it was mildly fun. I don't think I tried that. Right, I think this is it, right? Uh, load it. What did I screw up? Oh. 
try that again. No, wait. Or wait. How did I? How did I screw that up? There we go. Right. And then instead we take try horizontally. Boom! Right. So now what we do is that we take. Uh, we don't need to do this. We do the horizontal thing. And we get that value, which we will multiply with the vert. Uh, words. Is that it? You think we got the got the proper answer here? It looks like we got the proper an answer here. Hmm. Note owner says that Minecraft wouldn't scratch the Factorio itch unless it was modded. Right? Yeah. Might try that, but there are other things that scratches the Factorio is itch, isn't it? Isn't there? Yeah. Colgatino tab says that Hyper Rogue has free versions. I pretty much only played games that are free or have free versions. I don't want to put my money into games if I don't like, if I don't know whether I will like them or not. Yeah. Not only says demos are a thing. You can also get refunds on Steam within two hours played, no questions asked. Very nice. Yeah. Macaroon Granola says, hey again, I just updated Twitch and clicked on the sub button and now it doesn't even give me the token purchase tab at all. What the heck is going on with Twitch? I don't know, Macaroon Granola. Sorry, I can't help you. I mean, maybe what's happening is, oh man, if I believed in magic, maybe some magic is going on and telling you to save your money. Yeah, save your money. Save them for Christmas and buy yourself something nice? Yeah. Alright. If Twitch is broken, right? Since it's working for Node Runner, Macaroon Granola, we could assume that Twitch is not the problem, right? We could assume that maybe either it's your connection to Twitch. Right, for some reason, um, external stuff that is needed doesn't work, or it's your browser. Yeah, it could be your browser. Not only says, yeah, try a different br browser, like if you're using Edge or Chrome, switch to Firefox. Exactly, yeah. I'm using the app for iPad Mini 2 tablet. Oh, that might be the the Twitch app, then, that is broken, right? I don't have a tablet. We don't do that. Try through the web browser, Safari, says Node Runner. Yeah, exactly. Try a different browser. If your app doesn't work, try another one. All right, do you think we did this correctly? I'm curious. Oh, shit, you didn't see this. My... My big face was in the way, right? So what I did was just, you see, I, I made these two functions. And I called them both on uh, on this long string here. Oh. Garoon Granola says, thanks anyways. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't work at, at Twitch or anything like that, but all right. Here you see, I just took... This one to join them all together, which should have given me the horizontal position. And this should give me the vertical position, and I multiply them with each other. We're gonna see right now if I get the correct answer. We're gonna copy this. We're gonna go back in here. We're gonna go to Advent of Code, and we're gonna do my input, and we're gonna submit. And that is not the right answer, damn it. Your answer is too low. If you're stuck, make sure you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips on the about page. You can ask for hints on the subreddit. Please wait a minute before trying again. 
You guessed this, and that was wrong. All right. Our answer was incorrect. So what did we do wrong? Time to troubleshoot here. Hmm. Nodrunner says, fun fact about Wayland. You can actually use X11 based tools still, but only on apps running under X Wayland. Yeah, that makes sense. Also something to have a, like the goal is to not use X Wayland at all, but that, I suppose that is years away, maybe. Hmm. All right, so we did something wrong. I don't know what. We drop two. Yep, yep. Down, up. Wait. Down is plus, right? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's like if you launch X size. Dice will only follow your cursor when over X windows. Oh, look at that. Huh. We will never get rid of X Wayland as long as games exist. Sure. Yeah, as long as games exist, we'll never get rid of it. But all right, but only play only doing X Wayland stuff in the games, I suppose. Shit, I don't know what I did wrong. Yeah, but up, we were ha- yeah, 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 they- I didn't make this mistake that I thought I was gonna do, but... Hmm. Huh. Right, an empty list should return z zero, yeah, exactly, when we're done with this. And a singleton list that returns a zero as well, so that's all fine. And every time we pattern match when we reach down. There uh, a, a problem. The problem is prob no, it's not here either. No, there has it has to be a problem here. It kind of resets. Does it reset? Is that what happens? Right, because here we plus two numbers together, but here... Where does this number go? Is that it? This number seems very high if we're actually dropping numbers. I don't know. Hmm. Northern says, I don't know if any games run under Wayland. Maybe if they're built with a uh, modern SDL. Maybe, I don't know. Try to take smaller inputs and see what go goes wrong. Right, so... Um... Yeah, 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 that's actually a, a good idea. Let's do that. Some troubleshooting. Do some proper troubleshooting. All right, so we take this away and we just go this. Yeah, 259. That's definitely not okay, right? What if we just take... Um... Take 10. That becomes zero. Uh, 
How? Mm. Down three, down eight, that's eleven. And then up three, that's actually. We just um, take a ten. Oh! Shit. Did I not do words here? Words, dire words. No, no, no. No, I, I, I did this wrong. Here we go. Words. Oops, uh, I did something wrong. Take 10. Here we go. 14. That looks better. Let's not take 10. Let's... Words. Words dire. And let's just take... How many? Maybe ten? Shit. Right, what do we get here? Down, down, forward, up. Yeah, so take 10 is fine. And what we're supposed to get is... Right, 11. What, 8? We're supposed to get 8. But we get 14. Ooh. Wait. Yeah, it's here somewhere. It's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. I flipped this. These are all flipped around. We're gonna take that number minus this number, right? Well, the tabs is yes. Yeah. That kind of screws everything up, so... Take all that and shift. Hmm. Take down the dire is forward nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I flipped that around, but in here, this is the one that needs to change. So, hmm. Visual, let's take that and put that here. Does that work? Inverse is called getting on tap. This works too. Right, with the plus, it doesn't matter, right? Because plus, yeah, it doesn't matter. But when we do minus, it's very important which number is on which side. So this should just work, right? Try this out again. Uh, wait, shit. Isn't that the exact same number we had before? 216. Yeah, that's... Oh. Did I forget to write? No, I forgot to load. There we go. Load. happened why did we get an error message no modules loaded oh shit day two there we go now we try it again here we go that number is bigger that number is way bigger so let's try again Not owner says I have a, another song I made. Oh, I would love to hear it. That's the right answer, and we get a gold star. Nice. Right, we haven't caught up, and I've completely overstayed my lunch, but yeah, I feel like, yeah, we're doing this. 
this is the advent thing. We're gonna catch up tomorrow, probably. Yeah, catch up. And then we can do can do them daily after that. Right. We would love to hear that. So well, um, do you want to send it to me now, Nerd Runner, or can we listen to it? Another day. I kind of oh shit. I don't have time for lunch anyway. So we actually I can listen to the to the song straight away if you want. I've got a person coming over in ten minutes, so I won't have time for lunch anyway. I don't know since I saw it on my file system the other day, but I lost it. It happens. You can go. Right. If you find it again, I would love to hear it. Yeah. But yeah. I'm. Uh, I guess I'll go to the bathroom while I wait for that dude shows up. All right, so thanks for hanging out, and we'll continue this advent journey tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So have a good one. Cheers.